Let's look at the friction and the restitution material parameters next. So one thing that you have to be aware of is that uh, in USD physics, we decided to cut a couple of corners. And one of them is that in real life, friction is not actually a material parameter. Um, the coefficient of Coulomb friction is a property of a pair of materials that are interacting. Um, but uh, to keep things simpler, we decided to ignore that fact. So I'll show you what you can nonetheless do with friction in USD physics and in Omniverse. So you can see here that these boxes, when I start to simulate, they seem to have different friction coefficients because this guy, when it hits this ground plane, it slides a lot further than the other two, despite having had the same initial velocity. And that's really, in fact, true. If we look here, I'll turn off the mass viewing because we don't care about that anymore. Indeed, uh, this guy has material zero assigned and uh, this guy has material one assigned. Let's see what the floor has assigned. It has a floor material. So material zero, material one, and the floor material. Let's look here at the floor material. The floor material has friction coefficients of zero. So it's effectively frictionless. Um, material zero has 0 0.1. So it has a bit more friction and material one has twice as much friction. So how do these things work? So clearly the floor and the cubes have different friction coefficients. Again, in the real world, they would have a single combined friction coefficient. The secret to that is that we have these friction combined modes and they're set to average for all of the different materials. That means that for example, when the zero friction floor um, is interacting with a cube that has a friction of uh, 0.1, these two numbers get averaged and the effective combined friction that is going to be used is going to be 0.05, right? Um, that's basically how it works. And uh, uh, let's see, what are the other combined modes that would be possible? Let's try to set them actually for all of the different materials at once, because really setting them to different, um, uh, for different materials, you probably don't want that because at that point you would need to think about how to combine modes combine. And that's a little bit crazy. So let's change it from average to minimum. And we know that uh, the floor has no friction. So what this should do is that they should all keep sliding forever because you will be taking the minimum of zero and some number, which should be zero. Let's try to see if that works. And indeed, now none of the cubes stop and they just keep on sliding. The way these uh, materials uh, are assigned to the actual boxes, we've already looked at that as part of the material density demo. So I'm not go over that again. It works the same way. Uh, I also promised to talk about restitution. Let's load that demo because it works in exactly the same way. So here you have, uh, instead of sliding, you have these balls that are going to be bouncing and you can see that this ball is bouncing a lot more than the other balls. So let's look here. It has uh, the material number four assigned while the non-bouncy ball has material zero assigned. So let's see, material zero has a restitution of 0.2 and we would expect the more bouncy ball, I think it was four, right? Yes, exactly, to have a higher restitution. That's basically how much energy it retains in a collision, um, how elastic the collision is in um, you know, more technical terms. Uh, it's a higher coefficient. And these guys are also um, combined, just like the friction coefficients. I do need to note one more interesting detail here, though. Note that for the ground plane, the physics material is not set. It's set to none. And also the graphics material is none. So you might be wondering, where do the physics material parameters come from for this object? Or does it even have one? 
And the answer is yes, it does have one. There is a concept called a default material that is assigned in the physics scene which this particular object is part of. So all the objects that don't have an explicit physics scene assigned, and so far we didn't talk about that, and you can rest assured that all of these objects don't have an explicit one assigned, they all use a single default physics scene in your stage. And even if you don't create one manually, like uh, I showed in previous tutorials, then one is created for you. So there is always a physics scene, whether it's explicit or implicit, and the physics scene has a physics default material material field where you can have a default material assigned, <clears throat> and we do. So here, there is this default material object, and then you can see what the scene default material properties are, and then any object that does not have default material proper, uh, I'm sorry, any object that does not have its own physics material properties assigned gets to use the properties defined here.